So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Hey guys, we're out here in the kitchen garden and I'm fixing to plant my potato slips. And I wanted to bring y'all along with me because quite a few of y'all have been asking me about showing when I plant my potato slips this year. And a video that I done just a little while ago showed you how I done my sweet potato slips. And I just took some, you can see how small these sweet potatoes were. Those were grown last year and they were just some really small ones that were left over. So these three little things grew all these slips right here that we're fixing to plant. And I'm gonna plant them here. This is an older raised bed that Mr. Brown built when we first moved here. And I'm gonna plant them in here. Now, the soil that's in here, it's been composted. It's for several years, we've done nothing but compost and, and these, uh, especially the older beds, which means it's uh, got leaf compost. It's uh, just kitchen scraps. It's got goat manure. It's got uh, leaf compost. It's got a lot of worms in it. So it's got a lot of worm manure in it. So it's some really good, dark, really good soil. So I'm gonna be planting my sweet potatoes in here. So I wanna bring y'all along since I've been asked several times to show how I do my sweet potatoes. And you can see how these roots have really, everything on here has got good roots. And even if it didn't have a root, I would still plant it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring y'all closer down here to all this good looking soil. And I'm gonna show you how deep and how I'm gonna plant my sweet potatoes. Okay. We got our soil and it's ready. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, this is one of the, the slips and you can see the, the roots that started. But what I'm gonna do is I wanna plant this. Now your bed needs to be at least 18 inches deep. This one is more than 18 inches deep but a little bit more. Um, so you want to have your, your bed plenty deep enough unless you're putting them in the ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I want to do the six inches. So I'm going to take these bottom leaves off right here. And we're going to call that six inches, even though it may be a little bit more. And I'm just going to show you how I'm going to plant this. Now if y'all hear this hand behind me, <laughs> Danny's put her in the the pen behind me here in the corner of the garden. She's getting broody and he's going to try to set her. So right now she's not liking it. So I think I've got that down six inches. Let's see. It's pretty close. Let me go a little bit more. And I'm going to bury this six inches right up to the top of the leaves just like that. And we all know that you get the plants will get its nutrients, not just from the roots, but from the leaves too. So I'm going to leave the leaves, the very top leaves sticking out just like that. And I'm just going to continue to plant my sweet potatoes just like that. So we'll do one more. And she's being annoying. Settle down. She don't like being kept up. She was getting broody, but she don't want to be kept up. 
So I'm going to take one more sweet potato slip. And I'm going to take these bottom leaves off just like this. Put it down in there six inches. And cover it up to the very top of its leaf sticking out the top just like that. So that's how I'm going to continue to finish my bed. Now I won't fertilize, I won't fertilize these probably for about a week. I want them to get over the initial shock of being planted out here and then I'll fertilize them. What I use is fish emulsion. My sweet potatoes and my green beans and stuff do really good with fish emulsion. And uh, you can get it at Walmart right now, but I've been ordering it off Amazon too. So fish emulsion, it's good, very good fertilizer. This one right here is pretty long. So what I'm going to do right here is the, the root part. And I'm going to take it. I done took some of these leaves off down here. So I'm going to come up here, right here, where that one leaf has come out. And I'm going to nip it right there. Well, let's see. I'm going to come down a little bit farther. And if I can get that off there, there we go. Okay, now I can bury this the way I want to. So we're gonna go down in there. Pretty deep. At least six inches. And I'm going to bury this. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take that other leaf off. I've just got that one leaf there at the very end. And that's all that's going to be poking up is this one leaf right here. So I've got most of that whole plant buried. And I can take this other end and plant it the same way. I'm going to take them leaves off. Even though I don't have any root system here, I'm still going to plant this and just hope that it goes ahead and roots. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Okay, we got our sweet potatoes planted. You see all their little heads? Oh my goodness. She is ticked off. But you can see their little heads above the soil. So I feel better now we got them planted. So if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comment. Maybe I can answer them. But I think they're going to start getting pretty happy out here. Oh, you're so mad. You're so mad, ain't you? You got broody, you got broody. Just like a woman. <laughs> Look, y'all, I want to show y'all something. I got a little broccoli. And I got another little broccoli right down there. My broccoli's really doing good. They always do good under this high tunnel. It's exciting. Keep up the good work, little broccoli. So things are slowly coming out of the greenhouse, but even tonight it's supposed to get pretty cold. But I still have uh, some of my tomato plants are still in here. And uh, that one right there is looking pretty sad. But it gets pretty hot in here during the day, I tell you. Even with the vents open and everything. So some of them kind of struggle sometimes. So that's one of the, the bad things about a greenhouse. If you don't have uh, like a fan or something in there to kind of keep the air moving. And it, like I said, it gets in the heat of the day, it can get 100 or more degrees in here. 
I think one time I had it, it was up to 120 degrees. And at that point, I didn't have anything in here because it would burn it plumb up. But I do still have tomato plants in here, of course, because just as soon as it really starts, I can, you know, it's still April and we could still have plenty of frost. And, you know, running out here and having to cover all this stuff up, you know, I just, I'm still waiting, still waiting to put it out in the garden. Uh, my bell peppers, I may just leave them in here because I absolutely love the heat in this greenhouse. And these little bell peppers are not real big, but they have already a bunch of little peppers coming on. This one's got a bunch of them up here on top. And they're just kind of hanging out in here, but they're doing really good. I uh, fertilize them. Anytime I water them, I fertilize them with fish emulsion. And bell peppers seem to absolutely love that fish emulsion too. And they love the heat here in this greenhouse, but you have to keep them watered. If you miss, I'm gonna say every other day, you can't go more than two days watering stuff in a greenhouse because it'll just be plum dried up and shriveled up. Uh, these tomato plants here, Danny bought these at the feed store. I didn't plant these by, uh, myself. These are German pink. Never had them, never planted them before, but, you know, he always likes to try something new. So if any of y'all have ever heard or uh, had any of these, let me know. Main tomato plants that I'm planting this year are mortgage lifters. They do really good in this part of the world up here in northeast Arkansas. This is a yellow pear. There's two of them there that's uh, because I planted several seeds and uh, I let two go ahead and grow up in there. Um, I love the yellow pear tomatoes. This is the Amish paste. Amish paste. This is a Cherokee purple. Now Cherokee purple is one of Danny's favorite tomatoes by far. There's a beef master. Another Amish paste. This is a mortgage lifter. Then I've got two more Cherokee purples here. And like I said, these are going to come out just as soon as I trust the weather. I got two Dr. Witches, witches or Witchies, whatever it is. Uh, these are the yellow tomatoes that have less acid. And I had these last year. And I really liked them, y'all. I really did. Um, I could eat them. And uh, they didn't tear me up. They tasted good. So that's a good one. I'm not really sure about how good they are to can. If anybody knows that, let me know. There's another mortgage lifter there. I'm not sure what this little dude is. I just know it's a tomato plant. I guess we'll find out, huh? And then back here are some that I had to repot because they were looking really sad. But this is almost paste, and those back there are all... The lemon boy now i bought these two at the farm store i wasn't going to really plant any different other kinds but i seen these and i remember how much i really liked them so these have got to get out into bigger pots just as soon as i can get that done because they're really getting to where they need to be really deep down in the ground so anyways that's all that's really left in the greenhouse are my tomatoes and then my bell peppers and like I said if they really thrive good in here I'm going to put them in bigger pots and I might just leave them here in the greenhouse if they're going to just continue to do this good because like I said they really love the heat to where the tomato plants they love hot weather but the greenhouse heat was just too much for them well this plant was in the greenhouse if y'all remember my last video in the greenhouse and it sat way back there in the corner of the greenhouse and it just really has thrived but today it got so hot in there when I come and checked on it the leaves were just curled up like this and it's not because I hadn't watered it because as a matter of fact 
I wired it yesterday. And when I felt of it just a while ago, it was just bone dry. So I thought, you've got to come out of there. But it's got a bunch of blooms on it. I mean, it's doing so good. It's a beef master, I believe. I may be wrong. I can't remember now. It's got a little tomato there. But it's just doing so good. And you can see right here what it started doing. So I had to bring it out of the greenhouse. Tomato plants, when it starts a, a small greenhouse like this that doesn't have uh, air running through it, even though it does have uh, vents on both sides, I open the front up and then it's got windows on the side. It just gets too hot in there. And your tomatoes, stuff like that, it just, it can't tolerate it when it starts getting this hot. But you've seen the peppers, the bell peppers, they were just fine. So anyways, I brought this one out. It's spending time right here beside the lemon tree. Lemon tree is looking kind of funny, but it's been inside all winter, so. Anyways, this tomato plant's looking really good. It just scared me when I walked in there and the leaves were all curled up like that. I thought, oh, you've got to come out of there because I sure don't want to lose. I mean, there's blooms. There's blooms all over it. So, got to take care of it. Look at how. It looks like black velvet, don't it? So pretty. These things, I didn't even plant these here. I just come up. Somehow, I guess, from all of those over there, these ended up here. And they seem to do that. So many have already bloomed and died off. I need to deadhead them. I got some, some wild little, I forget what these are called, but they're beautiful little, little flowers. They look like little white bells. And they just grow in the wild. And I brought some up here and planted them um, way back there. And this, and they, some of them ended up over here. And see how these grow outside the flower bed. So did these. They're pretty prolific, that's for sure. And I haven't been able to get in here yet and clean up. Oh, there's not enough time in the day. All of these were dug up. These are wild. And they are so pretty. Look at them. Are those not the prettiest little things? And I'm not, y'all know I'm not good on the names of flowers and stuff, but these grow out in the wild here on this holler. And I dug some up, painted them up here. And I'm going to say they're going to take it over. I've got these little, these grow whenever you see the purple irises, you're going to see these, I don't know if they're wild violets or what, but you're going to see them grow right in the middle of them. And they're just taking over my little bridge here so I could get that cleaned up too. Is that a wild purple violet? Because they do. They'll grow right amongst the purple irises and just take your bed over.
So thank you all so very much for being with me today and uh, just being with me out here in the garden, uh, planting my sweet potatoes. I hope they do good this year. They usually do pretty good, but there's always that one year that they just do extra good. So even if y'all just plant a few in a container, you can get quite a few out of that container. So I hope y'all was able to start some slips and uh, start you some sweet potatoes. So y'all have a wonderful week. I'm fixing to put up a video of uh, a while back. I pressure canned some pecans and uh, some of y'all been asking about my pecans and I'm going to open a jar up and I have to confess that I've already opened a jar up and I didn't make nothing out of it. I ate every one of them pecans. They were so good. So I'm going to open a jar up so y'all can hear the seal where y'all know how good it's sealed and uh, we're going to be making some little pecan tarts. I used to make these years ago for Thanksgiving um, at the big farmhouse when everybody used to come to my house for Thanksgiving. Not just my kids, but uh, lots of family members. Um, most of them family members are, are done gone now. So anyways, I haven't made them in years. So we're going to be making some little pecan tarts and they were so good. Um, and it doesn't use Cairo syrup either. So anyways, thank y'all for being with me. I'll be back in a couple of days and uh, we'll be making up something good. God bless everybody. We love y'all very much.